Hi guys, Freddy here. Welcome back to another retro adventure, the second of the week. Because as I mentioned on my video on Monday, the poll this week came to a two-way tie. Now on Monday I covered the first winner, Beyond the Mountains of Madness for Call of Cthulhu. A massive tome, 400 pages long. So check that video out, I'll note it up in the corner or wherever you do these things. But today I'll be covering the other winner, which is the much thinner In Search of the Unknown for Dungeons and Dragons. So I'll cover that on the desktop in a wee second, but if you'd like to help the channel out, then there's a Patreon in the description down below, where you can see these videos a week early, you can help support the channel, it'd be very much appreciated. Anyway, I'll be back at the end of the video with any other channel related news, but let's check out In Search of the Unknown. So this is In Search of the Unknown for Dungeons and Dragons. It is Dungeon Module B1 by TSR, and this is the 1981 release although it originally came out in 1979. Now it's called Module B1 because it's for basic rules Dungeons and Dragons. And it's very much a baby's first adventure type thing. Uh, you know, first steps adventure. An introductory module for character levels 1 to 3. Because not only is it a basic adventure with some simple monsters and things, simple traps, it's teaching the Dungeon Master how to handle all of those and teaching players how to play through a standard dungeon. It's giving you instructions on how to go through Dungeons & Dragons from beginning. This package contains a cover folder with maps and descriptive booklet within, forms a complete module for use with Dungeons & Dragons basic set. It is especially designed as an instructional aid for beginning Dungeon & Masters and players, specifically created to enable new Dungeon Masters to initiate play with a minimum of preparation. In addition to descriptive and situational material, this module also includes special informational sections giving background history and legends, listings of possible monsters and treasures and how to place them, a list of adventuring characters, tips on various aspects of play for the Dungeon Master, and helpful advice for starting players. If you enjoy this module, look for more releases in the D&D family from TSR, the Game Wizards. Dungeons & Dragons and D&D are registered trademarks owned by TSR Hobbies. And on the back is basically just an advert. This item is only one of the many play popular playing aids for Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, you've got the basic set, you've got the expert set, you've got this one, Insert to the Unknown, you've got Dungeon Module B2, the Keep on the Borderlands, Dungeon Module X1, Isle of Dread, Monster and Treasure Assortment sets 1 to 3, Dungeon Geomorphs, D&D Player Character Record Sheets, other release uh, releases of additional items relating to D&D are planned for the future. So, the back, instead of telling you what the adventure's about, is just advertising other stuff. Now, this adventure is kind of about a dungeon set up by past adventurers. They're not necessarily good people, but they went out and they killed monsters and they took their treasure back to a dungeon where they lived. Now, they fortified it, and they are believed dead now. So, the heroes are setting out to raid this dungeon and get all the goodies within. And we open it up. And the booklet is separate to the cover. We've got a very nice set of maps there. The upper and lower levels of the dungeon. It's only two levels high. And the booklet itself. And it goes through introduction, notes for the dungeon master, and it goes through various things, how to make it challenging and interesting, how various traps work, and other features of Dungeons and Dragons. Preparation, which should go into preparing for running it how time progresses, computing experience, which I find a wonderfully retro uh, phrase. Normally we would now say calculating experience, awarding experience. Computing experience is something you would do when you entered data onto a computer to compute it. Um, it just found, it sounds so retro, but this was written in the 70s, so we've got how to be an effective dungeon master. Um, the background, detailing out how these two characters went out and set up their sanctuary for themselves, a wizard and a warrior. Now, this adventure is somewhat dated, but will be easily adapted. And here's one of the things which show its date. We've got the legend table. So, in modern Dungeons & Dragons, your characters would go out, your players would roll dice for things like gather information or charisma checks to talk to people in bars and find out information on the dungeon they're just about to go to. 
However, in this, there is no such roll. You are rolling a d4, and you get a totally num random number of legends that you find out. If you roll a 1, 2, or 3, you get 1, 2, or 3 legends. If you roll a 4, you'd learn nothing. Then you roll a d20, and these are the rumours you find out. So, the name of the stronghold, um, the complex has two levels, part of the complex is unfinished, etc. But some of these are false. And every player gets to roll a d4, and then they get to roll on this table, and they find things out. And some players will find out the same things, and it might all be false things they find. Now, in more modern Dungeons & Dragons, as I said, you put these into charisma roles, you put them into social checks of some kind. You'd get the players, player characters involved in getting this information for themselves, instead of it just being completely random. But that seems easily fixed. You know, just change it over and have different DCs for these. And then roll on the random legends table. Uh, if they fail the DCs, then you could have them find out the false ones and just not tell them. Anyway, we've got the dungeon itself. We detail through the area for exploration. And then we've got the various areas. But the two floors have wandering monster tables. Again, this feels a little dated. Um, check every second turn. One in six, roll a six-sided dice. If a monster is indicated, roll a six-sided dice again and compare to the list below to determine what type of monster appears. So, monsters turning up is completely random. You're just rolling. I would think that the Games Master of these days would want to maybe put some kind of challenge in there that the players, when they're making too much noise, might attract attention or something like that. But in this, totally random. And then we go through in the encounter areas. So we've got the entrances and leading through. I'm not going to detail all the areas, but there's some basic uh, things here where you find out information if you succeed a read languages check. Um, there's different types of illusions. Dispel magic will get rid of some of the traps. It goes through, you know, we've got read magic tests here. Um, different things you encounter in different rooms, whether it's monsters, whether it's different types of treasure, or just general equipment. Um, there's a smithy, there's access rooms, meeting rooms, and we go through the top level. Um, including the one of the chambers of the heroes here. A rather interesting sort of trap room with pools which have various effects. Some very beneficial, some not at all. Some very hindering to your characters. And some totally neutral. Um, we carry on through the first level and then we reach the lower level. And again we've got the Wandering Monster table with a different range of monsters this time. And we just go through the different caverns below the populated area or the main area of the hero's hideout and we've got the various things here different caverns we discover different monsters we encounter treasure and then we've got this ends the module search for the unknown um it tells you what you do afterwards you know it talks about the monsters which might be encountered and gives the stats for you to easily find we've got various random types of treasure that you can encounter then we've got the character lists so you can have, choose from random characters, or you can get hirelings, which again is something which is kind of old school. These days when heroes go out adventuring, they tend to use the fact that they are more robust, so traps won't tend to kill them. Where in the old days, traps were deadly, so you'd want a hireling to go first to get uh, killed. Um, you know, we've got the hirelings, personalities, non-player characters... Uh, credits page there. Then we've got various random tables of characters. So, Fame, Farned of the Great Church, Dorum, servant of St. Carmichael for clerics. Uh, fighters, dwarves, and halflings. We've got Brandon, a human, Ivro, a human, right down to Zephan, the dwarf, Shorembo, the halfling. Different magic users and elves. We've got Presto, the elf. Wasn't Presto the mage out the Dungeons and Dragons cartoon and he wasn't an elf uh, just the same name obviously then we've got various thieves Leuven Lightfinger, Tredo Bosmos 
We've got the equipment that they start off with. There's a rather high chance of you starting with no weapons and no armor compared to somebody else who could totally randomly roll to have plus one, plus one equipment. We've got the char uh, player character background sheet. So this f gives the background story. It's a handout for the players. There's a background story detailing about what they know about this dungeon. And then some hints for them. We've got the random names, so they can roll on there and tell the Games Master which one they've randomly selected. And there's tips. You know, be an organised player. Keep accurate records on your character. Experience abilities items possessed for your own purposes and to aid the Dungeon Master. Always keep in mind that Dungeon Master is the moderator of the game. These are basically starting rules, but it's very nice to have them laid out here, telling players what to be expected. This would be a great introductory adventure. Just detailing through how to play Dungeons and Dragons. And it stands up pretty well to this day. As I've pointed out, there's some aspects which are slightly aged in the way basic Dungeons and Dragons played compared to your third, fourth, fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons. But the adventure itself is solid. Um, I think it, you could definitely run it today. And it'd be a whole load of fun. So, that was the Dungeons and Dragons module B1. In Search of the Unknown, which came joint first this week, tying with the Beyond the Mountains of Madness for Call of Cthulhu, both of which got 30% in the poll. Behind them came DNA DOA, an absolutely brilliant adventure by Dave Arneson, joint creator of Dungeons and Dragons, for Shadowrun, which came in at 19%, Unbound for Mech Warrior on 17%, and way behind was Nightwalker the Villy Affair for Millennium's End on only 3%. Which is sad for me because I absolutely adore Millennium's End stuff and would really love to cover it. But it faded away so quickly that not many people remember it, leading to it not doing very well in these polls. And other channel related stuff, well, I'm still recovering, I'm still trying to get everything done. There's so much demands on my time the last few weeks, I just haven't had a chance to do anything. But that looks like it will be clearing. So hopefully I'll have good news next week and the week after as we get the channel back on track. But as usual, I think I've witted on for quite long enough. So thank you very, very much for watching. But as always, most of all, you look after yourselves. And I'll catch you later. Bye now.